All right, how's it going, y'all? Wait, is this a white shirt? Anyway, today we're gonna to be installing guacamole on a Raspberry Pi, which sounds absolutely disgusting, but it's actually a really cool tool that lets you control pretty much any of your servers from one centralized dashboard. It works with VNC, it works with remote desktop, it works with SSH, it works with pretty much anything you can imagine for a remote connection into a server, and so it's a great thing to have. It allows you to easily connect to anything through one specific dashboard, and if you wanted to, you could also open this up to the internet, though you do want to make sure that whatever you're doing, if you are doing that, is very secure, and I probably would not put root passwords or anything that could really get you in too much trouble in case there was a security breach or anything like that. And so this tutorial is going to be covering how to set up on a Raspberry Pi, but in reality it works with pretty much any other Docker container that you'd like. You just need to find the right image for whatever your architecture is. Specifically, the one I'm going with is going to work well for Raspberry Pis, but it also does work with x86 architecture as well. So you just got to find the right image. This one should work with either one. Just make sure you choose your right architecture when you are doing this. And this will also work on Synology or pretty much anything you're running a Docker container on. The one thing I did want to say is I've already gone through and installed Portainer on my Raspberry Pi. If you don't know how to do that already, I'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the description below. Just go ahead and do that really quick. It's very easy to install and it makes managing Docker containers so much easier than anything else. And so for this, a Raspberry Pi 4 is a great application. Raspberry Pis are actually a lot more powerful than you would think, especially the Raspberry Pi 4. And so it can do a lot. It's not going to be able to do a ton of things simultaneously, but something like guacamole where you're only very rarely using it, this is great because you can run five or six other Docker containers that aren't being active when the guacamole is active, and then you're totally fine. And so you can have all these things working in tandem without worrying about anything like that. And so it's really cool that you have a, such a low power device just sitting on your network ready to go whenever you need it. All right, and so now I've already gone through and done a couple of things ahead of time. And so pretty much what you're gonna to wanna to do on your Raspberry Pi is you're going to want to make sure that your router is giving it a static IP address every single time. This way you never have to like look up and try to figure out exactly what IP address your Raspberry Pi is at. Instead, you can always connect to it. And that way you can add it to like your favorites and everything like that. And so you wanna go ahead and do that. And then you're also going to want to go ahead and install Portainer on there. And so I'll go ahead and leave a link to both those descriptions. Basically for setting up a static IP address, you just need to go ahead and figure out how to do a DHCP reservation for your router. And so the other thing that I've actually already gone ahead and done before this video is I've actually gone through and pulled this container right here. And so you're going to want to pull the container for you because it can be quite slow. It's a very large container. And so I have already pulled this right here. And so they've already got a Raspberry Pi client right here. So I pulled the OZNU, I do not know how to pronounce that, guacamole, and then it's ARMHF. And so I've already gone ahead and pulled that so that way we don't have to wait like 15 minutes for the thing to download because Docker Hub is actually quite slow even with my Google Fiber. And so I've already gone ahead and done that. But I'll just go ahead and show you how to do that really quickly. You just go ahead and copy the actual thing. Then you just go into your portainer environment, go into images, and just click paste. And so that's all you need to do right there. And then if you're running x86, instead you would choose the x86 version of this, which I believe is the default. Yeah, so this right here is the default, so just don't add in the ARM HF at the end. And so just go ahead and do that, and you can see it's 1.2 gigs, so that's why I had to go ahead and pull it ahead of time. And so now setting up the container is actually really easy to go ahead and do. We'll just go ahead and follow these Docker Hub instructions. It really just tells you you need port 8080 and a config directory. And so we'll go ahead and just create a volume for that and just add a volume. We can just call, call it guac. It's the volume for your guac. Oops, got all autocorrect. And then we'll just go ahead and leave it as a local one, way easier, we don't have to do anything. And we'll just go ahead and hit create the volume. And so now we have a volume that we can actually start pinning this config file to. So right here, all we need is pretty much open up the port 8080 and have this slash config file. And so let's just go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and go into containers, add a container, and we're just going to go ahead and name it. So you actually don't even have to pull the image ahead of time. If it's not already on your machine, it will just automatically pull it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I just wanted to speed up because it's a very large container and it took forever to download the first time. I actually thought Portainer had crashed, it took so long. And we'll just go ahead and name it. 
I'm sure I'm going to misspell guacamole at one point in this video. And so just paste that in there. Hopefully it should just automatically pull this and we're not waiting forever. And so now we just need to do those two basic configs. We'll really do a third one, but pretty much the first thing we need to do is add in the ports 8080 to the container. So just go ahead and add in a manual port and then type in 8080 for both of them. It's just easier that way. And then we're going to go down and we are going to go ahead and go add a volume in here. And so we just need a volume that is slash config if we look right here. So it's slash config. And so that way we have a volume. And then under the restart policy, I always like to say restart unless stopped. And so that way you always have a version of it running. It just makes it so much easier if it crashes or anything like that, it'll just start back up. And so I would recommend that for most apps I'm deploying. And so now we'll just go ahead and hit deploy the container. All right, and so now it's automatically started up. It's gonna take a minute, just give it a minute. It's gotta go through and do a lot of init stuff. You can see it's doing a lot of stuff. So just sit back and relax and wait for these logs to stop. All right, and so now you finally wait and when the logs finally stop coming, it should be ready to go. So right here, I think is about the last log right here. Though you just give it a few minutes and then try to hit the website. And so it is going to be your, the IP address of your Raspberry Pi or host name if you've got DNS set up. So for me, that's 10.30.0.7 colon 8080, which is that port we set up. And so here we'll go ahead and see the login. You can see right here from the man page that guac admin is both the username and password. Obviously, we're going to need to change that. If it's just local and you don't really care, you don't have to live your life. And so right here, we've got the super simple page. We can just go ahead and do a quick change of the uh, username and password and go into users right here. We'll just go ahead and create a new user. And I'm just going to give myself full permissions. And so now we'll just go ahead and log out really quick and log back in with our other account. And that way we can go ahead and delete the default user. Just good security practice. And we'll just go ahead and disable the login. And so there, now the only person who can log in is you. That way you just don't have a default password running around, just a lot easier. And so now we can just go into the connections tab and add a new connection. So now we've got a bunch of different options that we can do. And so let's just go ahead and add in a name and we'll set up just a SSH. That'll be easy enough. We'll do test, just to test it out. And SSH is by far the easiest way, though all these options are here for whatever you need to do. We don't need to add any load balancing, any stuff like that. But what we do need to go ahead and do is give it the host name and the port and pretty much it. We're actually just going to have it go through and ask us for all this stuff. And so we'll just leave some of this stuff blank. So we're going to have it just test out by sending it one to db.sr. So this is my database. We'll just go ahead and test that out. And so now we can go back into the homepage and now it'll ask us what to log in as. And just like that, we are having a SSH terminal into my database server. It is so easy to go ahead and use that and it just works with everything. All right, and so now I'll just go ahead and exit really quick and we'll go back to our home screen. And so we can see that there's all the recent connections and we can also see all the connections. Then we can go in and add other ones, honestly, to your heart's desire. You will see there are so many different options here. We've got VNC, Telnet. I don't know who still uses Telnet, but sometimes you need it. SSH, which I just showed, and RDP. It pretty much handles everything you need to connect to all through one centralized portal. The other really nice thing is it can also just automatically get you to log in if that's what you want. And so, it's a great place to have a centralized portal for all these different services rather than trying to remember where everything is and having to go through and, oh, I don't have access to that on this machine. I have to install a VNC terminal. No, instead, it's just a web browser and it is so cool to be able to do this. All right, that's really all there is to it. Go and leave any other tutorials you like to be making in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.